glutathione and why should I be worried that I'm getting enough of it on a daily basis? Come back and we'll share. everyone, I've been doing a lot of research on glutathione. What is glutathione? Well, it's a naturally occurring molecule in the human body and it acts as a powerful antioxidant. Antioxidants are substances that help to protect our cells from damage caused by harmful molecules called free radicals. Free radicals can cause harm to our cells, leading to conditions such as inflammation and disease. Yes, indeedy, folks inflammation. Glutathione specifically helps to protect cells by neutralizing the free radicals and supporting the activity of other antioxidants in our body. It also helps to detoxify the body by removing harmful chemicals and pollutants, which is especially important for our liver. Now, you guys, antioxidant protection is one of the main things it does, and glutathione acts as a powerful antioxidant, neutralizing the harmful free radicals and supporting the activity of other antioxidants in the body, such as vitamin C and vitamin E. Glutathione helps to remove harmful substances, including heavy metals, toxic chemicals from the body, especially in the liver. And glutathione is found in a variety of foods, including both animal and plant-based sources. Some of the ketogenic food sources that contain glutathione include fresh fruits and vegetables. Remember, you wanna keep those keto, particular avocados, asparagus, and watermelon. Be careful of watermelon because it's higher in sugars, folks. It's also found in meat, poultry, and fish, especially grass-fed beef and wild-caught salmon. And I'm starting to eat more salmon because of this. It's also found in dairy products such as milk and yogurt. That's my El Ruderi yogurt I've got over on the counter. It's also found in nuts and seeds, including walnuts and almonds. Harry can't eat almonds, and we're both highly sensitive to almonds, you guys. So those two are out for us. But glutathione also has several important functions, including the human body, in the human body. It's also great for the immune system support. Glutathione is involved in the regulation of the immune system and can help to protect against infection and disease, specifically the huge virus that hit us over the past three years. It's very important for that. Cell protection. Glutathione helps to protect cells from damage and may play a role in preventing certain diseases such as cancer. Protein synthesis. Glutathione is involved in the synthesis of proteins, which are essential for the production and proper functioning of many bodily processes. So overall, everyone, glutathione plays a key role in maintaining the health and function of your cells. It protects against damage from free radicals and toxic substances and supports the immune system. It is important to note though that cooking and processing can have effect on the levels of glutathione in the food. So to maximize the amount of glutathione in your diet, it's recommended to consume a variety of fresh whole foods, meats, fruits, and vegetables, and to avoid overcooking or processing them. In additionally, a diet rich in fruit, vegetables, and other antioxidant rich foods may help to support overall glutathione levels in the body. While glutathione can be found in certain foods, it's also available as a dietary supplement. Yes, it is. And we take one every day, but it's always important to you all to talk to a healthcare professional to determine if it's safe and appropriate for you based on your individual health status and other factors. Anyway, you guys, just wanted to talk about glutathione. Good morning, everyone. Hey, good morning, good morning. Welcome all you new folks and welcome back 
to Loving It on Keto. How is everybody doing today, you guys? I got up, went to my Tai Chi class, had to do some running around, and Felicia, my daughter, and uh, Brad, her husband, um, have always, well, not always, but for a very long time, have adopted greyhounds. And they just adopted a new one. His name is Shadow. So I went over to meet Shadow uh, this morning when I picked her up. She got to see G.I. Jane. I got to meet Shadow. So we got to introduce everything. And then we went to our Tai Chi class. It was really, really good. I'm really, really excited about it because I'm, it's starting to catch on. I don't feel as wobbly. Today was the first time I did it in a fasting state. I am doing a 48 hour long fast. I forgot to mention that on yesterday's video. The reason why I'm doing it today, I'm trying to do a 48 hour or at least a 38 hour extended fast in my OMAD day, week, right? For those of you who are brand new, I am doing an OMAD, which is one meal a day, challenge for 90 days total. I started in January, the first week of January. I'm going to end it in the first week of April. So in, in including having one meal a day, you're eating, we are eating at a 23 hour mark with a one hour eating window. Now, after watching Dr. Mindy uh, explain the benefits, the difference between 23 hours and 24 hours is vast, and I wanna get the best bang for my buck. So what I am doing is I'm gonna start rotating when I stop and start that 24 hour fast in order to get it by doing and incorporating either a 36 hour fast or a 48 hour fast and trying to have it so that when I break my fast on one day, uh, I'm getting that full 24 hour benefit more often and using my OMAD meal to fill in in an hour. Now we're also using keto chow along with our food. So we're getting one third our daily um, minerals and vitamins. We're getting electrolytes doing that. When I am at my, some people have asked me this, so let me explain. When we are fasting, when we are not eating, we, I am Wendy because Harry's doing a little bit different. I am drinking coffee, tea, hot or cold, sparkling water, and water. If I add anything to it at all, it would be a few drops of stevia, which does not accelerate or change my glucose in any way, shape, or form. I do not add any heavy cream, no butter, no... Um, products like Perfect Keto Collagen or any of those things. I use those in my feasting window, my meal eating window, along with my keto chow. So I'm doing a true fast in every sense of the word, except for just a plain water fast or a dry fast means you're not taking in anything, no liquids whatsoever. I feel that I can do that on a Tai Chi day, but I do not feel as comfortable about doing it tomorrow when I'm doing my weightlifting or my training session. Now, not only that, but I've missed a training session last week, so I have two this week, and the only day she has is both Thursday and Friday. So there's no way I felt I could do a fast on both days and train uh, at the same time. I'm just getting my body used to doing a longer fast and I just feel that's too much, that I'm pushing myself too much. One time I did raise my head up a little too fast doing Tai Chi and I thought, woo, calm down, Wendy, right? So I feel really good. I'm not hungry and um, I have lots of energy. Now you guys, let's move on to yogurt or fermented milk. I have my very first batch of my L. Ruderi that has my um, coagulins, L, uh, bacteria in it as well. And the reason why I'm calling it a fermented milk product is because according to the FDA standards to call it yogurt, there has to be certain bacteria in it and this does not have it. Now, you can add a couple of tablespoons of a really good plain Greek yogurt, like Faye yogurt, into this, along with the bacteria I have, and you will have yogurt with the additional benefits of the other bacterias. 
Some of you are really excited because you've been making other people's recipes of the yogurts, and that's fine and dandy. The challenge with some of those recipes is you only cook it for eight hours and you're cooking it at too high of a temperature in order to incorporate a specifically L. rotari, L. rotari uh, bacteria. It thrives best at a very low temperature, 100 to maybe 106. You need to cook it for an extended longer period of time, such as 36 hours. Most of William, Dr. William Davis's uh, in the um, super gut book that I'm using to make this in has you um, allow the live cultures to go for at least 36 hours. So you are getting billions of them into this fermented product. So it's wonderful. Yogurts all have wonderful benefits. If you're making them yourself, you're cooking them for eight hours, you're doing the yogurt, you know, that is awesome. But if you want to use the l ruteri and the Caseri and the coagulins uh, bacteria in yours, you need to drop the temperature and cook them for the 36 hour mark in order to get and reap the best benefits for this particular fermentation for your body and your gut health. But I looked online today and the Kindle is, was it free, I think, to read the Kindle version? Well, if, yeah, that's and, if you uh, sign audio, up. And Kiddo Audio, if you sign up for it, I think yeah. it's free. So if you have that function, I would suggest that. Um, but we do have, because so many of you are asking us, we made a yogurt section on the Loving It on Keto Amazon store. There's a link in the description below. And I have listed the uh, Instapot that I'm using that I purchased for this. All of the bacteria products that I'm going to be using for yogurts based on what I have read in uh, William Davis, Dr. William Davis's book, Super Gut, including a copy of the book that you can purchase, including the lid for the inside pot that's gonna go right into my refrigerator. Um, and including, I thought I had my old one from when I was vegan and vegetarian, but I must have given it away, a yogurt, a Greek yogurt strainer, where you pour the yogurt in it all the way, full flows through the super fine screen, and you get a nice, thick, 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 I mean, thick like um, cream cheese that you can actually use as cream cheese. Uh, in it. So I have all that listed on the Loving It on Keto Amazon store. So you guys can go there and check it out. And I have both this package, which is the L. ruteri starter. And there's only one form of L. ruteri to my knowledge after looking at it. Uh, that's the one that you can get. And then this one where you can crush up the pills. They're both on there as well as... Um, this one that I'm buying, and then the Caseri one and the Coagulin one that I have that's coming. My next batch is going to be adding some more bacteria to my culture because I want my most bang for my buck. I want to get the immunity. I want to get the one that shrinks your waist up to an inch in 90 days. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. So I'm very excited. I only have six hours 46 minutes left we're gonna film this but this will not be on today's it won't be today's. on this video it will be on the following video because tomorrow. basically what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna film it i'm gonna share it on tomorrow's video i'm gonna pop the lid off take this out and i like it because see there's handles handles on this i'm gonna take the lid that i bought for it let me go find it hold The lid, yes indeed. Pop it on there and put it in the refrigerator until tomorrow. So you guys will see me taste it the next day as well. And we'll take a look at it. Good, bad, or indifferent. Now another thing a lot of you were worried about is that I had this on pressure cook. And I did not. I actually hit the yogurt button. And that's why I bought this. Now there is sous vide on here and there is a yogurt button. By pushing the yogurt button, it did not bring up the pressure gauge at all. This is vented 
It's been, it says vent and there's nothing coming out of it that you can feel at all. So it's vented. I cooked it at 100 degrees exactly and I have it on 36 hours exactly. So tonight before we go to bed, right before our video goes up, right before this one goes up, we'll be opening this up, taking everything out. I'm gonna film it all, good, bad, or indifferent, right? I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator. So a lot of you guys have left so many great comments. A lot of you said, save the whey, freeze it like an ice cube trays and use that to make your next batch, right? If you're, if you're pouring out the whey because you're afraid of carbohydrates and that's where the carbohydrates are, save that whey for your next batch because it has the live bacteria in it. And remember, the longer you have your yogurt in the refrigerator, right? The, 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 the more your bacteria is eating that up anyway. Um, I forgot what the ratio is on Faye yogurt where it says you're getting five carbs per container. It's actually half of that because the, as it sits on the shelf, the bacteria are alive. They're eating something. They're going for the lactose. They're going for the milk sugars. They're going for all of those things. So actually the next day you'll have even less of a sugar content in it or the inulin food or the potato starch or any starch that you use. If any of these, any of these products that I shared with you and the bacteria have even a little bit of maltodextrin and you're grinding that up, don't be afraid of it. Maltodextrin is a type of a sugar. These little guys are gonna eat it up so you don't need to worry about it, right? Because I think the, um, the one that uh, William Davis tells you to use actually has, and let me think, is this the one that I read has a little bit of something in it? Or was it one of the other ones that I was reading? But don't be afraid of it because it will get eaten. Starch, it'll get eaten. You have to put that in there for them to eat. So don't worry about it. I'm not worried about it. And someone also asked me, what is the breakdown? And I'm not sure about that, um, the breakdown of it because of the different strain that we are using. I guess you could take your half and half. You could uh, divide it all up into how many servings you wanted, how many ounce servings you wanted, and then deduct a little bit more for the amount of carbs. But since Harry and I are eating an OMAD diet, the days I want to eat the yogurt, I just don't eat as many vegetables, if any, right? So I'm not too worried about that. Something I was thinking about, and I can't wait. I'm gonna make keto chow ice cream using my yogurt. That's a good idea. In it, yeah. Use yeah, our, half, our six ounces of yogurt and put that in and blend it up and make ice cream with it. Ooh, that sounds delicious, because you have to be careful with this fermented um, milk product because it's very sensitive to heat. So you don't want to add it to a meal that you are cooking over the stove into a sauce or anything because the heat will kill the live bacteria. I mean, it'll taste delicious. And if you're not worried about having live bacteria, anytime you're cooking any yogurt, yogurt right, over the stove and you're boiling it, you're killing the bacteria. You're not getting bacteria when you do that. So um, just for the flavor of it or use it as sour cream. Ooh, yeah, instead of uh, yogurt, get that thick, rich Greek yogurt after you've put it through your um, strainer. Mm -hmm. So I am so excited. I am just... The yogurt that Paula made me, and she made regular yogurt. She used uh, the Faye yogurt as her um, as her medium to get her bacteria. She used something else too. And Paula, I know you're going to watch this. Let me know exactly what you used as far as yours was concerned. And I think she used half and half and maybe a little heavy cream. It was phenomenal. It was so good. I mean, I had to like restrain my arm <laughs> from eating it all because it was that yummy. I mean, no sourness at all, although I love sour, and I'm gonna use some lemon flavoring in, in some of mine because I love that tart and tangy taste, but it was just delicious. Okay, what else? Oh, thank you so much for everybody telling me J.I. Jane is super lovely, and for those of you who don't know, our Vita is our 30-foot gooseneck fifth wheel 
trailer and it takes a special hitch which sits in the back of a pickup truck. It's a lot of actually power too. bolted down in the middle of our bed of our pickup truck. So you have to have a special hitch. It's called a gooseneck and it has to be pulled a specific way. So unfortunately, if it were a, if if uh, we wanted to, we could not pull it with our um, yeah, Jeep. It's for one thing, it's four and, it's and a half tons. Yeah, it, it's a lot of weight too. Yes, we can pull with um, G.I. Jane. She has a whole package already on there, a towing package. We would be oh, able to pull our Wells Cargo trailer that's holding our uh, UTV in it or an ATV. We could pull that or a light boat, light boat with it because it only pulls up to maybe 35, 4,000 pounds. No, nope, so, not, not, even, not even that. So that's about all we could do with that. But the reason why we got the Jeep, for one thing, I've always wanted a Jeep. That's my most favorite car. We it was like off, my little dream. We go off-roading, off but with Sally's back, putting her in our ATV, our UTV, which is the side-by-side, -side, she was bouncing all over the place. And freaking out. And, and, and freaking out. Uh, before we had her back surgery, we did not know she was having super bad back issues. And we're looking for a specific holder so that we can strap her in properly and we don't go crazy we're not crawling up rocks we're not going down cliffs we're not no. going to use a come along to wench us up if any of you guys know anything about arizona crown king is this place off of table mesa way up in the top of a mountain it was a uh, gold and silver baron they did a switchback he built a railroad and everything and one of the things that the jeep clubs and off-road vehicles like to do is go in the back way and go up this one incline where you are just, it is rocks and come along wench to get up there. And there's actually a group of people and a store and a bar up at the top of that huge mountain that people live at. And that's one of the places that you go. And that's not for Harry yeah, and I. Not we're us. not going to be, we're going to be tootling along the dirt roads that are out there, but we're not going to be going off in boulder land or anything like that no we, we're not going to be doing that but anyway you guys i'm so excited about her so thank you all for congratulating us on that now some people said they think that's a six they five. said that this one is a six quart i said it was a five quart and i could be wrong harry put the actual one i bought on order and if that's the one you saw on our loving and on keto and store that then is. that's what this is yeah. and i can't open it up to check and i threw away the box yeah. So I can't tell you, but the one that's on the Loving It on Keto store is everything I bought already half of it, it's all paid for and it's either coming or I already have it for the yogurt page yeah, that just, we created I just for it everybody. Off of her order sheet is what I did. And you guys, so. yesterday Chalice and Mason came and they tried out the bread and they absolutely loved it. And because I am fasting today, Harry wants a hamburger, yes he does, on the bread. Yep. And we're gonna use, what is the new mustard we were gonna use? It's in the fridge, I, isn't it? Did I put it in the fridge? Yep, there it is. We're gonna use that. Um, so you guys, I'm not eating, but Harry is, so we're gonna come back in the next segment and I'm gonna build him a beautiful burger on my homemade bread. This is my, and I added it, I pinned it to the top of the comments a few minutes ago for everybody because there's so many new people they don't know and this is my bread harry got into it already today but isn't it beautiful you guys look at that and it is so soft and fluffy and it's beautiful that's another thing <sighs> the liners the two pound liners are sold out on amazon they're out of stock so you can only get the one the one pound bread pan liner. Sorry about that. Everybody wants them. And I'm loving the way this turned out. Specifically with the allulose, only using one tablespoon to get it browned like this. It was awesome. So Harry gets some bread. He gets a big old hamburger. We'll grab the leftover steak and stuff that he had that we brought home from the Longhorn last night. And he gets that too. So you guys, come back in the next segment. And I'll cook Harry up a little bit of an OMAD feast for him to have today. 
Okay, you guys, Harry's decided he wants open face, so I've got my bread ready to go. I've got hamburger that's left that we cooked. There's about six ounces in there, and I'm gonna use my organic seasoned salt. Thank God I got a new container. Yes, I did, because I was like having withdrawals from this. And we make our hamburger totally plain. So, um, for Sally. For Sally. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of onion on it, and then I'll stir it up when it comes out, when it's all done. A little bit of garlic. Garlic, onion, seasoning, salt is how we do it. I'm going to put this in under the shield of protection. And somebody still didn't clean out that, Harry. We're not. Well, you need to talk to that person about I that. I am. Get Marty in here. Right. To, it's all his you. fault. It's all Marty's fault. <laughs> anyway, we're going to get this out. I'm going to make a nice... Um, Harry wants to use this new mustard, mustard, yep. mayonnaise, ketchup, and pickles. Try yes, that, indeed. Now, are you sure you don't want a little bit of lettuce? I got a little bit. Nope. It's your iceberg lettuce. Oh, uh, no. Okay. So I'm going to put this all away. I really hope my first batch is a beautiful batch. But even if it's separated or whey or any of those things, I'm still going to use it because it'll make a perfect next step for my rest of my other yogurts that I plan on making. Yes, indeed. But I'm just hoping six more hours to go. Woo! -hoo! I'm excited because I love yogurt. I really do. Yeah, me too. I used to make a vegan uh, yogurt product, and then I used to put it through my um, separator to make uh, the cheese, fermented cheese, cream cheese type of substance to go on our bagels and stuff, and it was absolutely delicious. So I'm very excited. You know, you clean your cupboard of all the things that were vegan and vegetarian that you think you're never going to use again, and now all of a sudden I'm finding I need some of those things I gave away, but that's just the way it goes. I only have so, many so much room in my cupboard, that's for sure, but uh, yeah, <whistles> craziness. Oh, perfect timing. Heads up. Heads up. Seven up. Ooh, look at that. And look how beautiful those That's toasts. That's I like it. Yep, just like that. Doesn't that toast beautiful, you oh, guys? Oh, yeah. And it I think it's too. because of the butter and the uh, buttermilk in it. Yeah. But <sighs> I love you, bread. <laughs> anyway, enough about the bread. And Harry likes all of his stuff on top. Yep, just right on top. Just lay it on there. Put a little ketchup on the bottom first. Ketchup? I mean mustard. Do you Excuse want... me. Okay. Now yeah, put a little bit on, spread it around, kind of, you know. Yeah, got to try this out, man. It's got all kinds of stuff in it. We're going to take the mustard camping with us next week when we yeah. go with Paula and Al to Picaccio State Park because... We're gonna have those hot dogs. Yep. <gasps> Careful. Just rolled out on front of your camera. Watch my meat. This is very hard to do because my hand is killing me. Is it Careful. Right now? Yes, it is. Why? It's hot. Yes, it's hot. Oh. Can't you see the steam? Yeah. Move, move, BB. Mustard. Yep. Put it on there. Don't be afraid. It's thicker because it has pieces of yeah, like onions stuff and stuff, good stuff in it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, some pickles and some mayonnaise, some ketchup. I would say cheese, but I'm staying away from cheese right now. I'll put a big dollop of mayonnaise in the middle, and you can spread yeah, those I'll the spread way you around. like yeah, just, to. Yep. Because right. I want to get some um, pickles, make it a big bunch of pickles mm -hmm, for you. Mm -hmm. But I have some pickles. Yes, pickles. I like those pickles, too. Yeah, these are the good ones. These are, um, can't oh. get uh, Heinz pickles here in the U.S. I know you guys can get them overseas, but for some reason, we can't get them here. And those are my most favorite in the entire world. You can buy them 
on Amazon, but they're like super expensive. Mm -hmm. I, I bought some last time. A couple of jars were like 20 to 30 bucks. Yeah, it's it was kind crazy. Of crazy. I don't get it. So. Must not be grown here. No huh? more for you. One, two on the mayo. Yep. Let me put a little pickle on top. Oh, cute. There you go. There you have it. There is your delicious open-faced hamburger, mustard mayo, ketchup, and mayo, and pickles. Yes, indeed. So, Harry. What? What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, okay. Don't you want your yes, shake with that? Yep, you got it. It's a good idea. So, he's getting a... It's like having a malt. <coughs> like having a malted. A snickerdoodle. Yes, indeed. You guys, don't forget, when you see this, if you have not entered to win the Z-Star Grill, you better do it tonight because we're drawing the winner tomorrow on the 8th. And you guys need to go to this video only. You need to live in the United States of America. You need to put in hashtag star. But we are giving that away. It is a, a smokeless grill, air fryer, dehydrator combo, and we love ours. So don't forget, you guys. But anyway, I wanted to make sure everybody knew about that. Don't forget, if you have not done so already, please remember to like, subscribe, ring that little bell, give us a thumbs up. We'll see you right here tomorrow. It's Sally's cute. It's Sally's cute. She knows. What do you say, Sally? Ah, ah, what do you say? Ah. Yeah. You know what, though? We got to go out and get the last carnivore out of our Vita because this one. This is it. This is the last piece. This is the. This is the very last. I know. I know. That's your carnivore dog. You love it. We took him to a tombstone though with us. Uh huh. Yeah. We all had some. Carnivore crisps, and you had your carnivore dog. All done. Okay, say good night. Good girl. Good girl.